Thanks for listening to the Art Tactic Podcast. I'm your host, Adam Green. This week's episode, are joined by Jose Da Silva, exhibitions editor at the Art Newspaper. On an annual basis, they release, I think, the most fascinating and comprehensive study on museum visitors, and it's always great to dig in and see what the latest trends are. And Jose is kind enough to join us to chat about this year's study. Jose, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, thank you for thank you for having me, Adam. Um, it's great to be here. Definitely. Yeah, it's great to have you back to kind of get a sense for how things are going in the museum world over the last year. For our our listeners that aren't familiar, the Art Newspaper's annual survey is the most comprehensive worldwide study of museum visitor numbers. I mean, there's so many museums, so many people attending museums. Before we even dig into some of the details in this year's survey, tell us what exactly is your methodology for gathering so much data and how long have you been doing it? Uh, sure. Well, um, we so each year we look at we contact around five hundred, six hundred museums around the world, and we ask them for their essentially we ask them for their visitor figures. How many people have visited their museums in the previous um, calendar year? Um, we've been doing this survey since um, nineteen ninety seven was the first one we did at the art newspaper. Uh, the survey kind of formats changed a little over the years. Uh, initially, we only asked for exhibition. Uh, visit the numbers to individual exhibitions and later on we started to ask for total attendance to museums which is what I think people find most interesting and most kind of useful um, and yeah and every year we'll, we'll in the first instance we'll contact these um, museums around the world and ask them for their figures and a few other bits of kind of key information um, how they how they count the visitor numbers the most popular show that year um, any reasons for kind of visitor figures going up or down and then we publish a a big report um, around around the figures uh, in our April issue every year, um, and that kind of includes analysis of the kind of trends um, and other kind of things that that we've kind of noticed over the past uh, year or or year or so. It's a lot of work, and it's uh, I think really interesting to look at the numbers because there isn't really that much transparency about some of these museum trends outside of what you provide. So before we even talk about some of the biggest takeaways of this survey, can you remind us, just looking back in the last few years, how difficult was COVID for museums and what was attendance like during that period? Um, well, I, I mean, I guess it's probably obvious to say, but the, the the kind of COVID period and all the lockdowns was probably the toughest time for museums in in well in centuries, I, I'd say. Um, for example, we we usually kind of add up the we take the top 100 museums in the world and we add up their combined visitor figures. So if, to give you an example, in 2019, which was the, the kind of the last full year pre-COVID, uh, museums uh, around the world had 230 million visitors and that dropped in 2020 to 54 million. So that's a fall of um, three quarters of, or more, actually, 77% fall from one year to the next as museums kind of shut around the world. Um, and I guess the other thing, to point out about that period was that we were contact we were still contacting these museums and trying to get hold of them and get their figures for for 2020 and it was the kind of first time um doing this survey i've been doing it since me personally working on it um since 2015 it was the first time that we, there was a real kind of um personal element to this so you contacted museums and there were bounce back responses because people were put on in some countries such as the uk uh, where I'm based, they were put on furlough, so press offices were no longer working, or people were finding it, were working from home and finding it difficult to get hold of figures. So there was a real kind of um, a more kind of personal element to the to the number crunching that year. And then since then, since 2020, uh, museums have you know started to recover slowly, but it's still been kind of a long a long slog, I'd say. But yeah, the the the, the kind of not only the lockdown, but the kind of aftermath of lockdown, so the sort of the drop in tourism around the world really, really impacted museums in a, in a kind of in a huge way. Now to this year's survey, what was the biggest takeaway or a few takeaways from this year's survey? I think the kind of general um, feeling that we have, um, so I, I co-edit this supplement with my a colleague of mine called Lee Cheshire, when we were speaking about this beforehand, is that there seems to be a sort of return to normality in it. It seems to be the first year where museums, uh, or major museums at least, are kind of hitting their pre-COVID numbers, um, sometimes exactly, sometimes just under, sometimes, you know, 
just over. Um, although the kind of total attendance, the top 100 museums is still down compared to 2019, down by around 20% still, the sort of major museums around the world seem to be doing pretty well. So the, the, the most visited art museum in the world last year was the Louvre in Paris, which had 8.9 million visitors, which is um, 8% below its 2017 figure. And the second most muse- uh, visited museum was the Vatican Museums um, in Italy, with, with uh, 6.8 million visitors, which was only 2% down on its pre-pandemic uh, numbers. So the kind of general feeling is that things are kind of, on the most part, getting back to normal. I mean, we have, for example, some museums hitting their exact uh, 2019 numbers. So the Rijksmuseum in Amsterdam um, had 2.7 million, vi- million visitors in 2023, and that's pretty much the same as they had in 2019. Um, last year, they were obviously helped by their kind of big Vermeer blockbuster. So that really gave them a push back to um, pre-pandemic numbers. But museums around the world, so uh, as far you know, as, as, as diver- uh, diverse as like the Getty Villa in Los Angeles, which hit its almost exact pre-COVID numbers, or the National Museum of Scotland, the same with 2.2 million, which is almost exactly the same uh, numbers they had in 2019. So these, I think, I think, well, these are museums hitting their sort of ceiling capacity, I think, um, which is kind of is, is a nice sign. And and I guess the only way to surpass those numbers is either to um, build a new museum or build extensions, which we also saw in our survey. If you, there are a few examples of, of museums that did that, you know, uh, surpassing their 2019 numbers by quite, by quite a, a significant number. I can give you some examples of those if you want. I mean, the, the, um, the, the art gallery in New South Wales, um, sorry, the art gallery of New South Wales in Sydney, which opened opened a major extension in 2022. Um, they had their, their numbers were up by 51% last year. Or another kind of example is the National Museum in Oslo, which again opened in 2022, um, bringing together several national museums under one roof. So it brought together the National Gallery, its Museum of Decorative Arts and Design, its Museum of Contemporary Art, etc., all under one big uh almost half a billion dollar actually more than half a billion dollar building on Oslo's waterfront and that um and they surpassed a million visitors that year which now makes it the most popular museum in Scandinavia so museums that have obviously expanded have have surpassed their their figures in in 2019 and a few other major museums around Europe also um some more kind of traditional museums also had record years so the Musée d'Orsay in Paris uh, the Uffizi and Academia in uh, Florence, all three of those museums uh, had record years surpassing 2019. Yeah, I wanted to actually ask you, kind of uh, drill down and look at some of the museums, you know, who gained maybe the most visitors in the survey compared to years past. And then if there were some you were, in, you were open to identifying that actually maybe had less numbers uh, than in past, you know, and I guess that could occur for a variety of reasons. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, those those ones I just mentioned that had sort of record years. I mean, the the most popular museum in the US last year was the Met, um, which had saw a huge jump in numbers compared to its previous year in 2022 when it was um, it was beaten to the kind of to be in the top museum in the US by the National Gallery of Art in Washington. So in most most years, the Met is usually the most popular art museum in in, in the US. Um, but the New York museums, I think, struggled a bit more than some other cities in, in regaining their pre-COVID numbers. But last year, 2023, the Met was, um, and this is just the Met on Fifth Avenue, they had 5.4 million visitors, which was up 10% compared to pre-COVID um, and up 67% compared to 2022, which is like an amazing um, kind of bounce back. Uh, that was helped by their most popular show, which was the Van Gogh Cypresses, um, which had nearly half a million visitors. So they were kind of a, a success story last year. Um, in terms of some museums that didn't do so well uh, in the UK, we're kind of we're a bit behind you guys over there in the US. So in general, our top 10 museums were um, down. Um, and the biggest, so the biggest drop was the um, National Gallery in London, which again, in, our, in last year's survey also performed very poorly and then this year they did um a little better than last year but they they were kind of slow they're still yet to regain their pre-covid numbers 
Um, I should say that they they closed their um, Sainsbury wing um, in twenty late twenty twenty two, so that has affected uh, their kind of capacity and also the, the kind of way to get uh, the entrances to the museum. But the National Gallery um, had the biggest drop in raw numbers in our whole survey, which is quite a surprise. Um, so they went from in twenty nineteen they had six million visitors, uh, and then in twenty twenty three. Uh, down to 3.1 million so almost uh, a drop of or almost 50 percent drop yeah i was going to say you mentioned a few major exhibitions that occurred at, at some of the museums you identified is the idea of you know blockbuster exhibitions does it feel like that's a really still a major driving force in attendance for museums and as a result do you feel like that's you know a big priority for a lot of museums to try to have these kind um, of exhibitions in order to draw attendance I think there was a there was a sort of conversation during the during the pandemic and just after when museums um, and and a sort of commentator spoke about the death of the blockbuster or, or that you know museums would start putting on shows uh, uh, sort of close to home of their collections or think or kind of maybe a bit more muted and 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 the the blockbuster or this this idea of you know getting hundreds of thousands of people into your museum was kind of was dead but uh in fact we found um that, mu- that the blockbuster still works and that the, and as I, I mentioned earlier the rights museum in amsterdam with its vermeer show and even though it limited numbers going into that show to try and make it a sort of comfortable um experience and also because most of the paintings are, are quite small so it's difficult to to get people around them they you know the last few days they were open 24 hours a day and and, and that that Blockbuster show really boosted their numbers, and I think this this um, I mean I think the blockbuster show has not gone away. Um, Van Gogh seems to be an artist that kind of draws numbers. I think the the um, digital numbers wherever wherever there are shows of his of his work. So the Musée d'Orsay that I mentioned earlier, there I think their most popular show last year was also a Van Gogh exhibition there, and they they beat their pre pandemic figures by six percent. So. Um, although we don't collect uh, extensive data on exhibitions, um, which we once did before the pandemic, we do still ask museums to report their their most popular shows. And it and from what we've seen, the the blockbuster shows are are, are not are not back as, as as big as they were before COVID, but they're starting to edge that way. And I think and I think they will they will continue to to figure highly in in, in future surveys. I was also wondering if there are any kind of geographical trends you've seen in the last few years in regard to museums, maybe being more or less visited by certain regions than in the past. So, you know, are certain regions, you're seeing more museums pop up or more attendance in those uh, regions than perhaps in the past? Yeah. yeah. Um, um, I, I guess, guess one, thing one thing I should, I should mention, mention as well, well one, one of the... the... One, one of, of the, the kind of caveats, caveats of our service, service is that, that the National, National Museum is in China, China which... which um, um, often, often uh, visited by like, millions, millions of people, of people. they um, their government they don't don't release the figures until, until later in the year. year. They won't give out figures. figures. So, so that's how that's, that's, that's a region that, that the museum is growing, growing um, in a lot. lot. Um, um, but in, in terms, terms of other regions, regions that, that, as, as I mentioned, the UK is not doing very well compared to its kind of equivalent countries around Europe or even compared to the US. Um, um, last, last year, year some of the museums blamed, blamed uh, a drop, drop in, in tourism, tourism but, but tourism, uh, tourism things are kind of kind almost recovered back, back to kind of pre-pandemic numbers. numbers. Um, um, another region, region I mean, one, one of the obvious regions, regions that's not doing very well, well is uh, the museums, museums in Russia, Russia. Um, um, following, following the, 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 the Russia-Ukraine war. So, for example, the Kremlin Museums, the Garage Museums of Contemporary Art, uh, in, uh, in Moscow, Moscow were, were both down, down around two thirds on their on their figures from twenty nineteen. Um, the state's, state's Hermitage Museum, Museum um, is, is down by a third. third. So, so they're pretty, pretty badly, badly kind of affected, affected by international, international tourism. tourism. Um, well, collapse well, in kind of foreign, foreign tourism to the, to the, the country. country. But, but the, the one, one museum, museum uh, the one major museum, museum in the country that's kind of bucking that trend is the State Russian Museum in Saint Petersburg, which was actually up. Compared, compared to pre-pandemic, pre-pandemic it's by 20%. 20%. That's, that's kind of an outlier. outlier. Uh, uh, and that and museum houses, houses a kind of large collection of Russian, Russian art. art. So, so, so I guess, I guess uh, 
Russian Russia obviously Russia not, not, I mean, I mean there's, there's maybe, maybe an internal tourism is still, is, 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 is still, still kind of happening, happening as opposed to international tourism to the country. country. Um, but yeah, those, that's, that's the kind of the region, region that we've seen the, the, the biggest, biggest kind of drop, drop anyway in, 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 internationally. But the, uh, do you, I mean, geopolitics affects, um, sorry, uh, the kind of does affect museum figures. So a few years ago, um, we reported on the, um, the Palace Museum in Taipei um, around, I think it was around 2018, 2019, their figures dropped quite a lot. And that was after um, the uh, changing government earlier in 2016 had kind of affected their relationship with China and the drop in Chinese and tourism from mainland China massively affected their figures. So the kind of geopolitics do affect museum, museum does, can affect museum attendance figures uh, around the world. Well, let's say we really appreciate you coming on the podcast and helping us dive into some of the data and your really fascinating annual survey. So I know you had an article come out this past week, and I know you have more more on the report coming out this upcoming week. Uh, what can our uh, listeners expect to see on the art newspaper? Um, well, yes. So this week we'll we'll be releasing. Um, so the report comes with our April April issue in the kind of supplement form so there's the the main analysis of the sort of ups and downs of, of museum figures around the world we publish a top 100 art museums uh in the world and then we also have a few other kind of features about sort of hot topics around museum attendance so this year we have one on kind of the rise of certain types of social media um we have one article looking at this uh the Van Gogh Museum and the Rijks Museum in Amsterdam, which both had kind of blockbuster shows, the Vermeer that I mentioned earlier, but also Van Gogh Museum did a collaboration with Pokemon, which kind of um, sent people a bit crazy there, rushing to kind of collect collect them all, um, so to speak. Um, and so this will all be out uh, online this week on theartnewspaper.com and also with the April issue, which probably lands uh, later this week in people's in subscribers' homes or in, in shops. Perfect. Jose, thanks so much again for coming on. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much, Adam. Thanks for having me.